a video on how to perform the programming for week four's CS50X Introduction to Computer Science program course. And uh, as you can see, if this was a uh, shot in 2020 during pandemic COVID-19, so um, a lot of you guys are doing this course while being off of work, which is a good um, idea. So I'm doing this version of filter, which is the one for less comfortable people, which is actually pretty hard. So uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I did it. And I'm gonna show you guys the most easiest way to do this that anyone should be able to understand. Cause I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube and they, it's too complicating and they're having a more advanced level. I've been doing this course from scratch, from <laughs> no, fun, no pun intended. All right, let's get to the video guys. So I'm gonna try to do this as fast as I can. I've been taking a lot of recording takes and they've been too long. So I'm trying to reduce it as best I can, but it's really tough. So make sure you're working in helpers.c. That's the first thing you wanna make sure. Not filter.c. Although you can do the program in filter.c, make sure you're working on helpers.c because the program at the end is only gonna submit helpers.c, okay? First of all, grayscale, one of the easiest ones. Please ignore these, uh, I have added extra um, variables in here, so please ignore that. That's just because of copying and pasting. So the main thing about this code is the RGB value is essentially the average of the other, R of the RGBs. So, so the red value is the average of all the three values, okay? Very simple, I know you probably already know this one. The trickiest thing is probably the loop. How do you get this thing to loop around and calculate every variable, right? Make sure to draw this three by three matrix. This is gonna help you throughout this whole bloody pro uh, problem set four. Uh, one, right, okay? So you need a three by three matrix to understand because you're gonna keep losing track. This is how this three by three matrix works. I recommend drawing this exact one on your on a piece of paper now these c1 m u c2 these are just variables that i have created to identify the the multiple different equations that we're gonna have to do later on okay things to remember here is that i is the rows so draw i here this is i equals zero i equals one i equals two this is j is the top remember that j is the second value J zero one blah 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 two okay so as long as you can understanding of what I what is I and J and what is I and J so like if you can know that this is I equals uh, one two right you, you kind of have to map it out and it takes a while to understand that then you'll know how to solve equations so to to do the the loop you want to loop it going like this then go into the next line then go into the next line that's how I looped it so basically I equals zero i equals zero and you want to hit that loop till it hits the end of the last row which is i equals two so and i i equals less i is less than height right why is that because you have to remember that the height of this matrix is actually three but the value here is two because it starts with zero so if you give that a little bit of thought, you'll understand why I less than height will capture all these rows. Same thing with the J equals zero. Start with this, going left and right, left and right, left and right. Keep calculating for each thing, the, the um, average value. And there you go. Make sure to separate it out like this, how I did it. That's the only way this round function works. Make sure these values are all floats. Okay, thank you. That's how you do that average. So let's get to the CPA now. So the way I did CPA, I did recommend that you separate all these out. In this example, I didn't do that, but it did pass the equation actually. It did work actually. But I recommend spreading it out to, to variables like this, to float variables, as it will calculate the proper number in this case, remember I did say it worked, so here's how you do it. Essentially, you have to also make sure to so do the same loop, as I mentioned before, same loop, but make sure you get the equation from the website, correct? And then make sure that if R, like the variables are greater than 255, you set it at 255. So it's very simple like that. See what I'm saying? And that's it. Very simple. 
Reflect. The next item here is Reflect. So in order to do Reflect, it's actually pretty simple. You're gonna make a string, right? And that string is just a copy of the first of the uh, lines of the actual image. So if you look at this, we're gonna make a copy of the string of the first row, and then we're gonna copy the, the last item into the first one. That's how you do a copy. This is one of the lessons we actually learned in lecture four. So the cool thing is that we're gonna use a char star. Remember char star is actually what a string is when we use get string. So a char star and the name of the string is copy string R RGB. Remember malloc from the lecture? Allocate some memory for this. So this is what I did, I allocated some memory. And um, the plus one is obviously for the N value. Then you're gonna loop it. And the way you're gonna loop this is you're just gonna cop copy the value of the RGB into this into our copy to our string that we just created. So RGB of this, copy to the string, RGB of this, copy to the string, right? Then once you have the string which is a copy of the first of the first row, this is the key of it then. This equation right here will what this means is that it's going to copy the last row, so the last uh, column or last item. So when you, when i and j equals zero, all right? When i and j is equal zero, it's going to copy the string value of the last one. So if you think about it, the width. Remember the width in this case is always going to be. Let's say if it's this, if it's three by three matrix. The width is three, but this value is actually two. Remember, zero, one, two. So that's why you're gonna do this minus one so that you actually get, it's accounting for the zero, zero in the first one. Minus one will get you this value. So very simple, and then free up the string at the end. Okay, so the next program that we have to do is obviously the hardest one, blur. And that's probably the one that you guys are actually here in this video for, so. This is how you do blur. Now, you must essentially, basically, you have to calculate the average uh, RGB of all the surrounding pixels. So let's say you're doing the corner. In the corner, you have to calculate the average RGB of this, 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 including this one, yeah? So you would have to divide all that by four and that would be your RGB value for this corner one. The corner two and corner three and corner four all are four divided by fours as well. And the great thing about the corners is that the corners are all values that you can calculate without any loops because they're all idle values that you would know. For example, corner three is, is at height this um, J zero, right? Corner four is at the, is at the height, maximum height and maximum width. Right? And then the mids, you have to calculate by calculating the average RGBs of this, 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 and this, and divide it by six because it's six items. Now that's the same with all mid, mid right, mid left, mid down, also known as the walls. Now the only, the, the lo bit largest calculation would be the full, which I called it full because it has the maximum number of divisions or, and averages. So calculate the average numbers of this, 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 all right? And divide it by nine, because it's nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventy-nine. There's nine items here. That's how you get the RGB of that. So corner one, essentially, like I mentioned, you're gonna be calculating the RGB. So that's why I call it C1R, C1G, C1B, as separate items here because you're gonna get the, you can literally specify which of the value of the pixel it is. You see what I'm saying? Now, one thing to point out here is that the width, I set it to width minus one and height, uh, to height minus one. The reason I did that is just for cleaner design of the um, equations and it helps me understand because I keep, I keep getting mixed up when when width equals three, and you really wanted to get this value, which is actually two. So I just set 
the width to be two, like to, to be the actual last pixel number, and the height to be the last pixel number for the height of the eye. So you have to just keep that in mind throughout my pro program. That, because it comes, it, you can get mixed. You can When you're debugging, that's usually where the problems happen. So in this case, width would be two, right? Even though the width is actually three, the value in here will be two, zero, two, which would actually be this value. So when I'm doing something like this for C2, right? Uh, I have to do width minus one and width minus one. Width minus one would be the would be these ones. So even if it's a four matrix, four by four or whatever, the value surrounding it will always be width minus one. And this value will always be i equals one. Correct? So that's how you get the corners. Do that for all the corners. That's why it's a lot of calculations, a lot of uh, scripting. So just copy and paste wherever. Make sure you put in the right variable colors, right? So that's how you do that. It's very simple, the corner. Now, one thing important to note is that if you're changing the matrix, right? Let's say you calculate this to, and then you set that value to the new value in the matrix. Then when you're calculating the value for this, it's gonna use your new calculated value which is incorrect. It has to use the original pixel value. That's what, the reason why you have to create a separate actual matrix. So in order to create a separate matrix, type in this code. Because remember, this RGB triple is actually a, um, it's a structure, right? So it creates its own variable type thing. So if you do, I just named my, uh, my matrix copy. You can name it whatever you want here, and height, width, uh, keep that the same, so it takes in the value. That's why when you do all these calculations, you want to add it to the new copied matrix. At the end of the day, you're going to be copying from your copy matrix, just copy the whole matrix to the actual original matrix, and then you'll get your blur. So as you can see, copy 00, zero equals C1R, copy 00, zero green, C1G, see what I'm saying? You're just copying these corners into the actual copy matrix. The walls, same thing with the walls. You just have to average them all out. But you can have a loop now because you can have, if it's a four matrix, you'll have two of these, right? Two mids ups. So you're only gonna do a, a loop from after the first one and before the last one. So that's only the ones in between. That's why I said J equals one. So it starts off at one. And then it keeps going, right? J O Y, and it's less than width because if you remember, width is actually two because I did minus one, right? So width equals two, and if it's less than two, it will only do the ones before that. See what I'm saying? So do the same calculations here, and um, you think you only need one loop for this one because. You set i equals to zero. Because right now I'm just I'm connecting um, when i equals zero. Oh, you're gonna have to do two uh, twice actually. Because do once when i equals zero and then once when uh, i equals the height. Actually, you might have to do four actually. So you do all the different, uh, all the different options here. When j equals width. Set the so we just have to calculate this one, do a loop for this one, do a loop for this one, and do a loop for that one, right? For all the walls, but the same kind of thing. So these equations will constantly be changing as you have to calculate, you have to write it down. Like I actually literally wrote them down here to determine, the, determine how to do it. So that's how it gets long, but it's actually just try to try your best to make sure these are correct. It's hard to debug it after. Not too hard, but like I had to debug. Then you remember to copy them. Make the copies. Put that in your loop so that it copies the correct IJ value. Now the full middle, which is the main one. Now since you've done all the other ones, this one will be a piece of cake. Because you're essentially doing two, you're doing a loop that does not equal the walls and does not equal the corners. So it's all the middle stuff. You can do that loop just by this. 
I equals one, J equals one, which gets you to the first box uh, next to the corner. Keeps going until it's less than height, less than width. And then you just do the same equation. You just have to get all the values surrounding it, which is essentially the plus ones, minus ones. So it's all the different options. So it's not too bad. And you copy it out into the copy it out into the copied matrix within your loop. And then um, just the rest of the matrix, the rest of the thing is easy because you're just copying from the matrix that you that a copy matrix to the real image. See, so the real image equals copy this. So I just did the corners first. And you can probably do a full loop, but uh, I just did the corners first. And then I did the walls second, you see, using the same kind of loop. And then finally I did the middle, which is, simple, which is basically just this. And that's it, congratulations. You, you have just learned how to um, do this problem set four. Leave me comments if you have any questions. I'll try my best to help, but this one should be easy to understand because it's not using anything too high tech. Just basic loops and matrices. I have explained all the high, uh, high tech stuff on, on this one. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and if it actually helped you out. Feel free to comment and not only I can help, but other people who are doing the course can help too. Uh, let's all help each other out on the CS50 during COVID-19. Uh, 2020. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.